Hello everyone. From this uh, video onwards, we will see some problems related to testing of hypothesis. Now we will go into the session. So the problem reads like this. A manufacturer supplies the rear axles for postal service mail trucks. These axles must be able to withstand 80,000 pounds per square inch in stress stress, but an excessively strong axle raises production costs significantly. Long experience indicates that the standard deviation of the strength of its axles is 4,000 pounds per square inch. The manufacturer selects a sample of 100 axles from production, tests them and finds that the mean stress capacity of the sample is 79,600 pounds per square inch. Test whether the mean stress capacity is different from 80,000 pounds per square inch at 5% level of significance. Now, let us, first step will be to capture what are all given in the question. So it talks about a manufacturer who manufactures this uh, rear axles for certain trucks. These axles must be able to withstand 80,000 pounds per square inch. 80,000. Pounds per square inch in stress test. Means the average, uh, uh, what do you call, average strength is 80,000 pounds per square inch. And when they talk about average here, they are talking about in general, means in the population. So it is basically population average. Okay. You may notice one more thing. It should be able to withstand 80,000 pounds per square inch. But at the same time, if you try to manufacture the axles to withstand more than this, actually it is going to increase the production cost also. That means the manufacturer will be interested not to go less than 80,000, not to go above 80,000. Means he is focusing on both the sides, right? Long experience indicates that the standard deviation, this is standard deviation given, which is 4,000 pounds per square inch. Standard deviation of the strength. The manufacturer selects a sample of 100 and sample size is 100 and for that the mean, sample mean is 79,600. They are asking us to test whether the stress capacity is different from 80,000 pounds per square inch at what? At 5% significance. These are the things which we need to convert it into a Notation, we we'll see that. So let me write here. What are all given? Population mean. If you look into this, stress capacity. Stress capacity. Since it is related to population mean, I'll call this as mu. That is given as 80,000. Then going back, standard deviation for the population is given as 4,000. Standard deviation of the population mean stress capacity. Since it is population standard deviation is denoted by sigma, we had already seen in our previous video uh, about the notations which are being used. So these are the notations for population. Then the sample size is given as 100. Sample size denoted by notation small n that is given as 100. One thing we can conclude is that this sample size is a large sample because it is greater than 100, sorry, greater than 30. Since n is larger than 
one more thing here we can say population standard deviation is known. It is already given in the question, so I say it is known. Then, the sample mean for the sample, whatever they drawn, they tested the stress capacity for the average stress capacity, which is 17,600. So sample mean, sample mean stress capacity, since it is sample mean, we'll use the notation x bar that is given as 79,600. Okay. Going back, uh, test whether the mean stress capacity is different from 80,000 pounds per square inch. Different from means it is to test, I can say, to test the mean stress capacity, that is the population mean, because any test is related to population parameters. So mu, is it different? Means is it different than 80,000? Is it not equal to 80,000? That is what needs to be checked. Okay. And then the level of significance is given in the question as five percent denoted by alpha. Either I say five percent or I can write it as 0 0.05. First thing, when we see all these things, the what is to be tested is about mean, population mean, and it is about a single population. So I can say the above is a test concerning the single population mean. So we know if it is a single population mean or two population means either we go for a z-test or go for a t-test based on certain criteria. Here already it is satisfying this criteria that is population standard deviation is known and also the sample size is large. So when these two conditions are satisfied, I need to go for, I can say since Sigma is known and N is large, we will go for Z test, which we had seen in the previous uh, video, uh, when to use Z test and when to use T test based on this and writing this. Let's move on. What is the next step? Next step is to freeze on the hypothesis. Means we need to write down what is our null hypothesis H0? What is our alternative hypothesis H1? Null hypothesis will always have an equality sign. We know the population here, what is to be tested is about mu. And previously itself we had captured, here it is, mu equal to 80,000. That will become your null hypothesis. And then alternative will never have an equality sign. Here it is, not equal to 80,000. That will become your alternative hypothesis. Since the alternative hypothesis is having a not equality, not, uh, not equal to sign, I will say this is, it can take a value which can be less than 80 or it can take a value greater than 80. So it becomes a two-tailed test. Two test. Now, there are some standard values available for Z test to be tested, standard table values, standard table Z values for our Z test. Anytime when we test about Z test, let us make one table and write those tables here. I will say two tailed test. These uh, table values, whatever I'm writing, it is also available from your area under standard normal uh, distribution tables are also called as a Z tables. From there also we can take this, but since the significance levels are generally uh, standardized, I can even have this table ready-made with me. These are all level of significance. 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 22%, 23%, 24%
two percent, five percent, and ten percent. Let us write the values here. It is two point five eight, two point three three. This is one point nine six. This is one point six four five. So here it is, 2.3, this is 2.05, 1.645, So this is generally standards Z table values. In this question, they had given the level of significance uh, given is 5%. And this is a, a two-tailed test. Hence, okay. Hence, Z tab. I'll call it as Z tab. What is Z tab? Z tab is Z table value at five percent level of significance for. Yeah, two tailed test. We already have the value here, it is 1.96. Let us move on now. The next step is to calculate the uh, value based on the test statistic. The relevant Z test statistic will be statistic here it means the formula what we are going to use it is z cal under modulus which is modulus of z calculated z cal i'm writing in short form it is actually z calculated and the formula for this is modulus of x bar minus mu divided by standard error. SE is nothing but standard error. Uh, SE is standard error. And the formula for standard error is sigma divided by root of small n. Sigma is what? Sigma is going to be 4000 and the root of n is root of 100. I think it is small n is 100. Yes, small n is 100. So it is root of 100, which is nothing but 4000 divided by 10. That works out to 400. So therefore, our Z cal under modulus will be modulus of what is x bar x bar is given as 79800 sorry 79600 79600 minus 80000 is our population mean divided by 4 If we subtract 79,600 minus 80,000, it is actually 400. 400 by 400 is 1. And the numerator, it is actually negative. But since there is a modulus, it is ultimately 1. Now we have our Z cal value. Now, how do we infer? Inference. In case if Z cal under modulus is less than or equal to Z tab, then we accept null hypothesis. 
or else we reject null hypothesis in which case we accept H1 means when we reject H0 we accept H1 here Z cal under modulus is equal to 1 and that is definitely less than Z tab which is 1.96 and hence we accept H0 we accept the so this is the conclusion or the inference for this particular problem. In case if you find this, find the contents of this video to be useful to you, I request you to please like, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you.